Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe if you love democracy. Today we're building Sheev Palpatine, otherwise known as Darth Sidious, the Emperor or the Senate if you're feeling Mimi. It may seem difficult, but I promise it is possible to learn this power, but not from many Jedi. Let's start off by figuring out our goals for this build. First, we need lightning fingers, so even when we're unarmed, we can defend ourselves. Next, we'll make sure that we can actually defend ourselves while armed with some magical sabers that we're actually pretty great at using. Finally, we'll make sure that we can let things play out behind the scenes with spells and abilities to help us get things done democratically. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll if you want, but know that it's a pathway towards abilities some would consider unnatural. Charisma will be number one. You're persuasive, deceptive, and intimidating. Hell, I bet you could sing a song if you really tried. Dexterity after that, the whole feeble old man act is just that, an act. Let's just say Anakin isn't the only one who knows spinning is a good trick. Constitution next, attempts on your life might leave you scarred and deformed, but not dead. Wisdom will follow, you gotta be able to read people to determine who your next apprentice will be, or just see who's winning any given fight and shout, do it. Intelligence is a bit on the lower end, sure he's a schemer, but I'm saying that that just means you're brave enough for politics, which would be charisma. Well, dump strength, you lift with the force, not your core. Sheev is a human. Variant humans are more suited for politics. Take the diplomat feat from the Feats for Skills Unearthed Arcana. This will give you plus one charisma, expertise, and the persuasion skill if you have the persuasion skill, which spoilers you will have the persuasion skill. You can also force an insight check against your persuasion on a creature you've spoken to for a minute. If they fail, they're charmed while you're within 60 feet of them and for one minute after you leave. Quick note, the charmed effect does not equal mind control. It just means that they'll be friendly, won't attack you, and you'll have advantage on subsequent charisma checks. Still good, but I've seen some confusion about this in the past, so worth clarifying. Bump your charisma even further and your constitution with your two free points, take deception for your skill of choice and the noble background for history and persuasion. You're not just a senator, you are the Senate. Kick things off as a sorcerer. First level sorcerers can grab two skills from their list, grab insight and intimidation. They can choose an origin for their sorcerer's powers and storm sorcerers really like lightning. Shadow sorcerer was considered, but Palpatine doesn't have a dog. So a storm sorcerer feels more like something he'd use. The best to his magic lets you fly 10 feet after you cast a spell of first level or higher. It's a great way to get out of a crowd of Jedi. For your four cantrips, Mage Hand lets you create a floating spectral hand that moves objects weighing 10 pounds or less within 30 feet of you. Message lets you use the force to whisper evil things to a creature within 120 feet of you. And Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack dealing 1d8 lightning damage and preventing the target from taking reactions. Another great way to bail if you need to. For your first level spell, Witch Bolt deals 1d12 lightning damage on a creature you hit with a ranged spell attack and it's concentration based for a minute meaning that you can just keep on hitting them without re-rolling as long as you stay within the 30 feet range. Catapult lets you hurl an object weighing 5 pounds or less at a creature, forcing a dexterity save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier. Failing that, they take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots. For your spell at this level, false life lets you give yourself 1d4 plus 4 temporary hit points in case some Jedi messes you up, but you still need to look healthy to get your empire on. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment your spells by spending sorcery points. The powered spell lets you reroll a number of damage die equal to your charisma modifier by spending a sorcery point. Heightened spell lets you spend three sorcery points to give an enemy disadvantage on a spell save. It's pretty mean, but hey, so are you. Jazek thoughts will help you find your next Darth by letting you read surface level thoughts on a creature within 30 feet of you for up to a minute. Could probe deeper if they fail a wisdom save. Turns out that Anakin kid has been doing some Jedi no-nos. I wonder if he's heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement or feat. Honestly, we really just want charisma at 20 as fast as possible, get that higher. For this level spell, levitate lets you lift things off the ground that weigh less than 500 pounds. If that thing is a person, they can resist with a constitution save. After you've lifted your noun, you can move it 20 feet as an action on subsequent turns. Sadly, you can't make creatures take falling damage with this, but it's still nice to be able to lift pretty much everything. Bouncing over to Warlock now, sure we had force powers before, but fully committing to the dark side means signing up with Shadowfell for a cooler sword. A Hexblade, if you will. You get Hexblade's Curse, letting you pick an enemy to flex on with the dark side of the force for a minute. Get down your proficiency bonus to damage rolls, crit on them with a 19 or a 20, and heal an amount equal to your Warlock level and Charisma modifier when you kill them. You're also a Hex Warrior, letting you pick a weapon to use your Charisma modifier for instead of Dexterity or Strength, so no need to invest in those pesky physical stats. The dark side pulls through once again. For your cantrips, Eldritch Blast is a meme for a reason. It's a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 force damage, pretty fitting considering you're using the force, and since you're at total level 5, you can shoot two beams instead of one, letting you hit multiple targets or one really hard. 
Chill Touch is a touch that isn't very chill. It's a ranged spell attack dealing 2d8 necrotic damage and it prevents the target from healing. For your first level spell, Charm Person charms a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for up to an hour. They have advantage on that if you're fighting them, but come on, how cool is the dark side? Are you sure you don't want to betray the Jedi? Expeditious Retreat is great for those moments that you just need to bail. Let's see a dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Multi-classing Warlock with other casting classes is nothing to be scared of. You basically just separate your Warlock slots and your Sorcerer slots, but can switch spells from either list using either slot. Keep in mind, Sorcerer slots take a long rest to recover, but Warlocks come back on a short rest, so just take a quick breather and get back to conquering the galaxy. The second level Warlocks get invocations that let you make your Eldritch Blast more forcey. Repelling Blast lets you push creatures 10 feet in a straight line when you hit them with an Eldritch Blast. Agonizing Blast lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of an Eldritch Blast. Yours is nuts. Get some more oomph into your evil beams. For this level spell, Shield lets you add 5 to your AC as a reaction when someone attacks you. I'd probably classify his armor as something in the lower light category, but you do technically have proficiency with medium armor from Hexblade, so if you want to be a thick boy, Sidious, I'm not going to judge you. Third level Warlocks can learn second level spells. Hold Person lets you paralyze a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. This can lead to crazy damage as every attack you land on a paralyzed target is a critical hit. So bust out your force choking skills, show everyone where Vader got his signature move. You also get a packed boon and you got a lightsaber from Plagueis, so Pact of the Blade lets you summon weapons to yourself as an action. That weapon counts as magical for overcoming resistances, lightsabers generally not super worried about armor. Fourth level Warlocks get an ability score improvement, cap your charisma, and move on to constitution. We have a lot of sorcerer hit die in this build, so pretty much all of your HP is coming from that con modifier. For this level spell, Blur from the Hexblade list gives targets attacking you disadvantage for up to a minute depending on your concentration, shroud yourself in dark force magic, and stay alive a little bit longer. Fifth level Warlocks get another invocation, Thirsting Blade lets you attack twice instead of once with your packed weapon. I don't know why you would use another weapon, but there is still that restriction. You can also learn third level spells, Counter Spell lets you shut down a spell of third level or lower automatically as a reaction you can shut down higher level spells with a charisma check equal to 10 plus the spells level you got capped charisma so that should go pretty well back over to sorcerer fifth level sorcerers get third level spells lightning bolt creates a 100 foot line of lightning forcing a dexterity save on creatures inside dealing 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail and half to those that succeed that's a lot of damage and remember you have extra third level slots from warlock levels sixth level storm sorcerers get heart of the storm giving you resistance to lightning and thunder damage and letting you deal lightning or thunder damage equal to half your sorcerer level when you cast a lightning or thunder spell of first level or higher to creatures within 10 feet of you. For this level spell, let's get our AC a little bit higher with mage armor from the first level, making your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier while you're not wearing armor for 8 hours. For an old guy, Palpatine is really hard to hit. 7th level sorcerers can learn 4th level spells, but I'm not really feeling any of these, so we'll continue playing cleanup on lower level spells with suggestion from the 2nd level. So let's you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature. If they fail, you can suggest something not directly harmful for them to do for up to 8 hours, depending on your concentration. If you have an important vote coming up, use this to swing some people to your side. 8th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement, bump constitution and dexterity to help your HP and AC. For spells, our last bit of cleanup is Thunder Wave, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cube coming from your person. This deals 3d8 thunder damage and pushes creatures 10 feet back if they fail, half if they succeed, and they aren't pushed. Force Push is a standard for a Jedi and Sith, and this is a big old AoE push option. Ninth level sorcerers can learn 5th level spells, and now we're back to some Palpatine options. Dominate person lets you fully control humanoids that fail a wisdom save for up to a minute. You can give them general directions, but if they're just not working like you want them to, you can use an action to take full control of them. Use this to trade in your old apprentice for a new, more Vadery model. 10th level sorcerers can grab another meta magic option. Distant spell lets you double the range of a spell with a sorcery point. This fixes a weakness of the telekinesis spell, which normally has a 60 foot range and lets you lift an object of 1000 pounds or less and move it 30 feet. If that object is a person or being held by a person, you make a contest of your casting ability and their strength. When you win, you can move that object or creature for the 10 minute duration and the creature is restrained by the power of the dark side. Unlike Levitate, falling damage is a thing with this spell, so send someone 120 feet in the air, or off a cliff, or wherever you want, and watch them plummet to their doom. 11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells. Chain lightning lets you hurl lightning at someone within 150 feet of you, then pick 3 of their friends within 30 feet of them. Everyone makes a dexterity saving throw, and failing it, they take 10d8 lightning damage, and half if they succeed. For bonus points, you can scream, UNLIMITED POWER! That might only work at my table. 12th level sorcerers get our last ability score improvement. More constitution means more HP and concentration. I'd go for that. 13th level sorcerers can learn 7th level spells. 
Finger of Death deals 78 plus 30 necrotic damage to a creature that fails a constitution saving throw, half on a success. This kills them, they rise as a zombie under your control. Probably won't be as good as Vader, but it's always nice to have an extra set of hands. 14th level Storm Sorcerers get Storm's Fury, letting you deal lightning damage as a reaction when you're hit with a melee attack equal to your sorcerer level. The attacker then has to make a strength saving throw or they get pushed back 20 feet, maybe out a window. Mace Windu, more like out the windu, am I right? Our capstone is the 15th level of Sorcerer, and grabbing a 6th level spell when you can take an 8th might seem weird, but mass suggestion is incredibly good. Force a wisdom saving throw on up to 12 creatures. If they fail, they have to spend the next 24 hours working towards whatever indirectly harmful activity you've given them. Here's why I saved it for this long. Casting it at the 8th level, they'll spend 30 days trying to complete that task. That's 12 Senate votes, 12 Death Star engineers, or 12 drummers drumming all without concentration. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got some great manipulative abilities, starting with a plus 17 persuasion check and escalating to commanding a group for a month. You've also got great damage with big lightning a couple of times per day and 4d10 plus 20 force damage from your Eldritch Blast as a cantrip. Finally, you're great at controlling enemy positions with telekinesis, lightning pushes, and Eldritch Blast, letting you move people literally as well as you do figuratively. For weaknesses, the dip into Warlock prevents you from getting those coveted 9th level spells, so you don't get to say do it and watch someone die. You're also bad at lifting, which might not seem like an issue, but that telekinesis check your enemies are making, Little Green Goblin Jedi has that too. Finally, a lot of your abilities rely on charming your foes, all elves resist that, and some enemies flat out ignore it, leaving you with a wasted spell slot. But just remember to manipulate the weaker minds, play the long game, and get some muscle with a dope helmet. But know that eventually that muscle might pass the wisdom save and have a negative reactor. Reaction. Wow, I can't talk today. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We do two builds every week. We'll have some more Star Wars content before episode 9. But for this poll, we're doing a redemption poll of all our redemption polls. Vote for Bowser from Mario, Tokoyami from My Hero Academia, Reptile from Mortal Kombat, Mystique from the X-Men, or Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho. And come back Thursday for more Keanu action.